and experience now this is not only for avidya pacha alav chakkuncha paticha rupe cha upajati chakku vinnana how do we see things i mean there is no antaryamin or something in a somebody who is seeing the upanishadic thinking is you are not you i is not seeing somebody inside is seeing i is only only an instrument but for the buddha chakku cha paticha when you have the eye and you know you, you know these things so uh, now you see how how revolutionary is the concept um, in 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 the buddhist uh, tradition okay then uh, let me address couple of issues of course this this doesn't mean that these are the only issues there can be many problems but uh, i will uh, pick uh, just few problems one is uh, you know this problem of patic uh, samuppada and the determinism the buddha rejects both determinism in whatever form of course determinism you find in many form karma determinism which is called pubbe kata hetuvada or sabbang pubbe kata hetuvada isra nimmanavada god or the swabhavavada and you know also you have uh, non causation or the denial of causation adicca samuppannavada uh, buddha rejected all these things and he believed that events are conditioned but not determined he refers to such concepts as sattanam attakara attakara means self action purisakara human action arabbadatu initiative power and gives a perfectly common sensical argument to brahmin who believed otherwise there's this story a brahmin comes to the buddha and says that you know he doesn't believe in uh, uh, purisakara so some translated as free will then buddha simply ask um, reminiscing of you know this famous argument ji mua you know like you <laughs> extend your hand and you know so in the same manner buddha ask then how did you come here you come here on your own and you are living on your own so do you say that there is no free choice here so you can see that the buddha's response was not really a, that much of a philosophical or uh, addressing some very abstruse idea it was very common sensical argument now such terms as kiriyavada viriyavada have to be understood in this context now k n jayatilaka one of the leading buddhist philosophers renders kiriyavada as free will because although we talk about free will so much in fact in buddhism we don't have this concept so kiriyavada believes that the person has uh, uh, freedom to do something so it can be translated as free will in uh, 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 not not in the verbal sense of course you know you have to interpret it when you interpret it you can see that it it could be under i mean translated as free will but um, the the there is no exact term for free will now among the buddhist uh, scholars uh, we know that there have been lot of discussions for example Uh, Valpola Rahula was kind of laughing at it, you know, if everything is conditioned, how can this, you know, will alone be, you know, the free? And then uh, uh, in one of his writings, K. N. Jaitilaka refers to another Buddhist uh, leading scholar passed away a long time ago, Malala Sekara, uh, who thought that, uh, you know, differently. And uh, so uh, K. N. Jaitilaka, this leading Buddhist philosopher, argues that um, Buddhist uh, theory of, uh, th- theory is something like, theory of non deterministic causal conditioning okay the important point here is this now uh, the scholars seem to make a distinction between being conditioned and being uh, determined so uh, scholars like k n jayatilaka wish to say it is not deterministic but of course it is conditioned so you can have something being conditioned but that particular thing is not determined but here the issue is that uh, what is the degree of something being determined and something being conditioned but anyhow we know that when we say uh, the the everything is caused by something else you know that uh, the in a way the is 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 a kind of causal determinism because um, if things are caused by something then that particular thing is caused by another thing you can kind of go infinitely you can regress uh, any amount um, so i i think that is common sensical and that has to be accepted but on the other hand we know that in our experience 
even though we can trace things to some ex i mean to the infinity is not practical so in our all practical purposes we stop at certain point and we don't go beyond that because it's no point otherwise you could go on and on and on until uh, uh, christianity stopped in god or aristotle stopped in uh, uncos course or something but we don't need to do that so the buddhist position has been although you accept that things are causally conditioned and determined but you know gradually you can see that deterministic element kind of fading away uh, so it's not to go beyond that is not practical but anyhow i think this this issue is very interesting you can see that buddha very clearly accepted that human beings can do things on their own but on the other hand we know the pancha skandha we are made of five skandha rupa vedana sanya sankara vijnana which are also causally conditioned so human beings are causally conditioned and things are causally conditioned but within that human being also can do something against it but then who is human being is he also isn't he also causally conditioned so i i think this this issue is there but uh, my i don't have an answer of course but the way i understand it's like a causal process now if you for, for example you take the take a situation of um, um i mean i am tempted to do something but i don't want to do it in such a situation what is the meaning of i am tempted to do something of course my my inclination goes to doing it but on the other hand another part of me says that don't do it which means that both are causal processes but within that of course you can make a decision okay you resist the temptation and you do something otherwise but that otherwise what you do otherwise is also causally conditioned but within that you can you can choose something so the most challenging thing is okay there are two things to do but the human being within that is he such a independent thing to make the choice no according to buddhism he is also going through this process so all our processes but the human element human being having certain uh, independence but still not really against the causal process because uh, i mean that is why we say that you know somebody who has been bad up to the midnight of today can't be like uh, 12 1 be a good person because it's not causally conditioned but on the other hand there can be certain situations where several different things are being developed all are causally conditioned so you can make a choice but anyhow we could go on discussing this uh, i mean it is one thing for the buddha to say that okay things are causally conditioned but still people have attakara purusakara but it could well be a contradiction i mean although buddha says that you know still maybe he can't maintain it because he's saying is one thing but on the other hand whether, whether it is exactly true is another thing so we could really according to the freedom given by the buddha uh, itself you know we can examine these things so you can see clearly that attakara purusakara has been accepted but of course at the same time within the causal process so p- people like k and jaitilaka want to say that is a theory of non deterministic causal conditioning so causal conditioning but not non deterministic um of course you know there are much more well known ordinary problems you know if you take the agent away you know how can you attribute moral responsibility i will come to that little later and the buddhist position seem to be a middle between two extremes niyativada and adich samuppannavada assuming a difference between being determined and being okay now second issue is in the four noble truths tanha is identified as the cause of misery in paricca samuppada avijja is identified as the relative beginning of point of the process now uh, in Pari- chatur four noble truths you know it is the tanha is the cause of suffering but in the paricca samuppada avijja paccha sankara it says is avijja paul williams say, refers to pravalna uh, thinks that uh, paricca samuppada development is later however uh, i do not think uh, this needs to be viewed as early or later Uh, for me whereas tanha is emotion avijja is knowledge related uh, i think this this same problem identical problem have two different aspects emotional aspect and also epistemic aspect knowledge aspect 
the difference may be understood not as early and later but as involving two ways of approach to the same problem in padisampada it is quite logical to have avidya for padisampada establishes reality as anicca dukkha anatta to see which is vidya so you can see uh, padisampada process starts with avidya avidya means not seeing anicca dukkha anatta or seeing something as nicca uh, uh, sukha and atta so uh, so the, in that sense vidya is to be uh, through vipassana to see anicca dukkha anatta so in that sense so according to my understanding uh, this is not something later development of course two different ways to approach the same problem uh, you can see that buddha uh, the the more popular ordinary common sensical approach has been always referring to the tanha but you can see that when buddha was uh, addressing specific people specific occasion he goes to the avidya now root cause is avidya but of course what is clearly um, displayed in human behavior is tanha maybe this is one way to look at this and then let me move into the third the agentlessness resulting from parisampada has given rise to difficulties in making sense of sansara and karma and experience of results for example putgalavada is an example from the buddhist history for the ordinary people the coexistence of anatta with karma karma vipaka um, is uh, not very uh, easy thing to uh, understand now uh, the difficulty has led to the early sutta division of nita atha and neya atha i'm sorry i'm not going to this describe all these things concept in detail because not will not have time to do that uh, i hope uh, I, uh, you to have some understanding so nita atha and neya atha direct meaning and indirect meaning and later distinction between sammuti paramartha in pali uh, abhidhamma and sangruti paramartha in nagarjuna now either as perspectives or as languages ultimately the validity of these pairs of distinction depends on one's goal to be or not to be in the sansara neither being unconditionally valid or invalid now you know this patichi samuppada i think poses a real huge challenge that challenge is now as i said earlier buddha takes away the agent no doer no experience okay now then the issue is this how are we going to account for karma and karma vipaka and sansara people are being born and uh, you are performing all the meritorious deeds as we witness in this morning splendidly so how are you going to explain all these things now if there is no agent why do you have to do all these things if you are not going to get the results why do you have to do it why do you have to spend your money on this so what is the explanation i think uh, you know the buddhists have been struggling with this all alone now the one classic example is what is called putgalavada in the buddhist history uh, some uh, groups believe that actually you have to posit a thing called putgala in order to explain this now uh, sometimes people believe that you know putgalavada is you know very marginal um, belief in the buddhist tradition actually no there were certain areas in india putgalavadins were the most dominant so there were thousands of buddhist monks who accepted this view maybe millions of other people who followed them so putgala is vada is not a marginal theory because there were so many followers for that why there were so many followers because it has a popular attraction it explains that okay ultimately don't worry you will, you will be the person who is getting the result but on the other hand we know that so karoti so patisangvedeti anyo karoti anyo patisangvedeti both are unacceptable to say that so karoti so patisangvedeti the, the exact person who is doing will get the result or anyo karoti anyo patisangvedeti totally different person will get the result both are wrong both are unacceptable but um, again you know what is the truth now okay so karoti exact person uh does things is wrong but on the other hand the different person does an experience things is wrong so you can see that you know this struggle in the buddhist tradition uh, to answer this question but i think uh, it de- depends on the way now for example as uh, 
teacher of Buddhism, I think uh, particularly the uh, venerable monks being in the Buddhist tradition, they are very often confronted with this problem. You know, how are you going to answer this question? But I have a commonsensical answer. I mean, commonsensical answer means how to understand what the Buddha say. Uh, Milinda Panya says, Nacha so, Nacha anyo, not the same, not, not, not a different person. Now, I would, my argument would be something like this. I would say, look at me, uh, whatever age at this time uh, of me, I was not born into this world like this. I was born maybe 60, 65 years ago. I don't want to exact my age. Um, <laughs> you know, like an infant child, right? And then, but after this so many years, I still identify myself with that child. But do I have that same body with me anymore? Do I have same mind with me anymore? But what is it? What is it, this thing called me? I'm identifying with somebody born in 65, 66 years ago. It is the unbroken continuity. Now, if that argument is valid for this world, now the, what Buddhists do is, you know, this unbroken continuity goes beyond this life. So you have the karma and vipaka. So if I don't have a problem of accepting something that happened, if I'm 60 years old, 60 years ago or 55 years ago, and still identify with me, of course you get married 30, 40 years ago, if you are now 60, 70. <laughs> you have to identify this, your same wife and you are the same person, right? So, how are you going to account for that? If you don't have an issue with that, you shouldn't have an issue with, uh, you know, after death, you are still, your process is continuing. I mean, that is the commonsensical answer I have, but apart, I mean, keeping that aside, I think this, this issue is very interesting. Now, when you look at the early Buddhist discourses, Buddha talked about nitatha and neyatha, certain things Buddha were to say, we have to understand as direct speeches by the Buddha. When Buddha talks about skanda dhatu ayatana, of course, he is talking about uh, this impersonal sense. But on the other hand, he does talk about uh, um, ordinary sense. Uh, I always remember when the Mahaparinibbana Sutta Buddha was saying to Ananda, Ananda, I am thirsty, bring some water. Now, Venerable Ananda has to understand this very correctly. Otherwise, if he thought, who is you? Who is me? Who is water? Patavya potejo ayo, so what the heck? No, you are not supposed to understand it that way. Buddha is thirsty, he has to be given water. Okay, so you should not mix up with these two types of languages. And in the, in the Theravada Abhidhamma, we have Samuti and Paramatta. And it's very clear, I think it is the Kathavattu commentary says that Sanketa vachanan satchang loka samuti karanan. Sanketa vachana, the, the, the conventional language, what you say in conventional language is true because it is the samuti karanan, convention of the world. Paramatha vachanan satchang dhammanan tathalakkanan. Paramatha vachana is true because it is the nature of the dhammas. So uh, the, 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 uh, the duality, I mean, the, the distinction has been explain and the same thing you will find again we will see in Nagarjuna in Nagarjuna's philosophy so ultimately what I would like to say is it depends on your goal to be or to, not to be in the sansara neither being unconditionally valid or invalid if we are going to be in the sansara let me put it this way if we are going to be among the people living with the people enjoying the world and reacting to the world you have to admit that there are individuals, there are things, there are tables and chairs, there are good and bad things, uh, sweet and sour, taste and you know, all these things you have to accept because you are going to live in this life. However, if you want to go away from this and you know, attain nirvana, then there is a way to look at it. I can't look at solid people who are really cute and nice and beautiful. I have to look at them as Rupa Vedana Sanya Sankara Vinyan, Pataviya Pote Jovayo. There is nothing to love or get into hatredness when Pataviya Pote Jovayo comes. But when they are personalizing people, you have to really, you, are, you love them, you hate them, you react to them. So according to my understanding, the whole thing is the two perspectives. If you want to be in the sansara, this is the one way to look at it, whole thing as beautiful, ugly, smelly, not, and so on. But if you want to be, go away from the sansara, there is another way to look at that. So neither is totally valid or invalid. It depends on what you want, what you want you to do. Okay, uh, the Buddha admonished Ananda, who was the view that Padisampad is not hard for him to understand, and said that he should not think so, for it's hard to grasp. 
the difficulty mentioned here in my understanding is not intellectual but emotional it is not that one is unable to see the points behind parisaupad intellectually it is that one cannot accept what one sees intellectually now this again uh, this is how i see this problem when buddha says that uh, uh, to ananda ananda don't say parisaupad is hard to understand now just is the buddha referring to some kind of intellectual difficulty we have in understanding what is sampad but when we look at the philosophical idea uh, it looks like that we can understand maybe maybe i am mistaken but you know it looks like that what the buddha is trying to say here the point you can understand you can comprehend it um, of course it may have been not uh, very easy initially for the buddha to understand um, sometimes in sri lanka i jokingly say that although it took 35 years for the buddha to realize four noble truths uh, school children attending dhamma schools when they are 7 8 years old they know four noble truths so it's no big deal <laughs> so you know uh, may have been difficult for the buddha to understand but maybe not um so for me you know it looks like it is not intellectual problem but the issue is what you see logically you are not um, ready to accept it say you know things are patavyapote jo vayo but you are not ready to accept it and behave in that manner so that will require a lot of um, perfect imparamitas and you know going in the sansara but intellectually as intellectual you can you can see the, you can see the point when buddha says that there is only rupa vedana sanya sankara vijnana nothing else you can see the point but then still then you have yourself you have i you me and all these things so anyhow um, this is this is echo according to i mean as i see the point is the difficulty in all this in more intellectual thing i mean the emotional thing not being ready to accept uh, this conclusion and behave accordingly but not not very much of intellectual thing now uh, from this let me move on to nagarjuna uh, because uh, my my reasoning here connecting nagarjuna is this again in the buddhist uh, philosophy we know that we could say that nagarjuna is the most commented on than the uh, interpreted philosopher among the buddhist philosophers in the entire history there's so much so much literature is there i think thousands of articles have been written on nagarjuna's philosophy but uh, what i am going to say in here is basically in my this section on nagarjuna is uh, in fact nagarjuna is not saying anything absolutely new that is my conclusion but of course this conclusion is not my conclusion alone or not my conclusion originally this has been suggested by people like ak god and you know others and then i worked with kalupahana in university of hawaii kalupahana is uh, so not really blindly following my teacher but of course i agree with uh, professor kalupahana when he comes up with this interpretation so uh, the gist of my interpretation of nagarjuna is that nagarjuna is using parisampad exactly for the same thing as the buddha used the parisampad okay let me demonstrate nagarjuna begins with anirodha manutpada manuchheda mashaswatam anekartha bananartha managama manirgamam yah pratitya samutpadam prapancho pashamam shivam deshamas sambuddhas tang vande vadatam varam now accordingly grammatically perfectly well you can interpret this as pratitya samutpadam and this prapancho pashamam shivam as adjectives that describe pratitya samutpada so simply what nagarjuna says is i salute the buddha who taught pratitya samutpada but you know this very interpret i mean this very beginning this interpretation is very controversial because sometimes this being interpreted i salute the buddha who taught anirodha anutpada who taught anucheda shaswata aneka artha nanartha so all these things taken separately one by one who taught pratitya samutpada who taught prapancho pashama who taught shiva but the way i see no i taught i salute the buddha who taught pratitya samutpada which is prapancho pashama and which is shiva and also the first uh, uh, these four pairs of uh, um, binary relations anirodham anutpadam neither nirodha no utpada neither ucheda no shaswata uh, neither ekartha no nanartha neither agama no 
uh, nirgam. So these are again I would consider as uh, aspects of characteristics of what is samupada. Where, why I hold this interpretation is very often you see that not all these uh, binaries but very often you see anuchedang ashaswatam. Now in the Sanyutta Nikaya, Nidana Vagga, you can see that many, many discourses there, Buddha says, Ete te ubho ante anupagam majjhena tathagato dhammande seti. Without getting into either of these extremes, the tathagata teaches the doctrine in the middle. Now, these extremes are ucceda and shaswata. So, without getting into shaswata and ucceda, where to describe the dhamma is, teach the dhamma is, what is samuppada. So, I think Nagarjuna is saying, in the same thing. Um, this suggests that Parisampada with which he gets rid of Sabhava, Dharmavada, was the main philosophical tool for Nagarjuna. Now, uh, Mula Madhimika Karika is, uh, in a sense, one of the very difficult texts in Buddhist philosophy. But on the other hand, it's very interestingly, if you understand one chapter very clearly, you understand the whole thing. Because, Nagarjuna, every chapter is trying to prove one and exactly the same point, applying one and exactly the same method to every subject that is discussed in the Buddhist philosophy. So if you understand one, you understand everything. But the difficulty is understanding one is not very easy. Uh, th that's the difficulty. But Nagarjuna's position was, I mean, what Nagarjuna living in the entire Mulamadhimi Karika, except the 26th chapter where he just discusses uh, Pratitya Samutpada, he is examining these things and showing that ultimately they are, there is no swabhava in these things. Okay, Nagarjuna equates Padis Samutpada Shurnata and Madhima Pratipat. Yah Pratitya Samutpada Shurnata Amtam Prachakshmahi Sa Pragnapti Rupadaya Pratipat Savya Madhima. Yah Pratitya Samutpada, whatever is Pratitya Samutpada, Shunitam Tam Pratakshmahi, we call it Shunita. Sa Pragnapti Rupada is a dependent concept and Pratipat Saiva Madhima, it's the very same thing as the Madhima Pratipat. Then he says, A Pratitya Samutpano Dharma Kashit Navidyate. So in the universe there is no any Dharma which is not dependently arisen. Yasmat, Tasma, the Shunyopi Dharma Kashit Navidyate, therefore, non-empty dharma also is not available. Now very often the students of Buddhism are worried about why this shunya, this is empty. And uh, we know that this whole empty concept has been um, uh, analyzed by so many philosophers from Japan, Nishida Kitaro to more modern philosophers. Uh, I mean, uh, fascinating array of uh, philosophical explanations. But here you can see that to say that something is pratitya samutpanna means something is shunya. So, Venerable, here there are two concepts, pratitya samutpada and shunyata, and then pratitya samutpanna and shunya, past participle adjectives. So, something is pratitya samutpanna means it is shunya. Now, this concept of shunya, again, is not alien to the early discourses. Now, in the early discourses, very clearly say, Sunyang idang atte nava atte niye nava. So this Nagarjuna's concept of shunya is not something totally new. Buddha very clearly says, idang sunyang, this is empty. This means the panchaskanda, empty. Atte nava atte niye nava, either with, by atta or something that belongs to atta. So in that two specific sense, when you say shunya, shunya of what? Shunya of atta. It's not like blanket statement, everything is shunya. Um, Kalupani used to make a distinction between everything is shunya and everything idam. This particular thing you point out, you are not making a total universal experience. You are talking about the Panchaskanda experience, but anyhow, you know those. Are. So here you can see a pratiti samutpanna dharma kaschitna vidyati. Just Asunya opi dharma kashitna vidyati. Now here, Nagarjuna makes your shunyata as the Buddha did with Pratisampada in order to get rid of everything, even very subtle. Now this particular statement uh, I am quoting here is again open for hundred and thousand and one interpretations. Na sansara se nirvana kinchi dasti visheshanam, na nirvana se sansara kinchi dasti visheshanam. So you inter 
translate this as there is no difference between sansara and nirvana there is no difference between nirvana and sansara now we know that uh, okay then you find nirvana in the sansara and you know you have all different types of interpretations ultimately within sansara you find nirvana in the act of sansara you find nirvana you know act of um, Mm, uh, sensual enjoyment you find nirvana and you know over various different types of interpretations uh, it's open but look at the next adjoining statement nirvana se cha koti koti samsarana se cha na tayor antaram kinchit susukshmam api vidyate nagarjuna says nirvana se cha koti what is the end of the nirvana and end of the sansara tayor antaram between them Su-sukshmang api navidyate. Su-sukshma. Sukshma means subtle. Su-sukshma means extremely subtle. There is nothing even extremely subtle between these two things. Now actually, I would interpret this as Nagarjuna is getting rid of through the use of Pratitya Samutpada, through the use of concept of Shunyata. There is no any mystery here. There is nothing even extremely subtle. uh mysterious here so all the mystery is taken away from uh by means of pratitya samutpada within sansara and nirvana now in order to support what i am saying let me quote another one tathagato yat swabhava tat swabhava midan jagat now again as a statement you take this is a very outrageous statement and also it can be blasphemous you say that buddha is exactly like the world how can you say that buddha is lokotra How can you say that? How can Nagarjuna say that? Tathagato yatsubhava tatsubhava midan jagat. You can't say that. However, you go to the next line. It's like Nagarjuna has this knack to like get people into their toes and you know. And then he unsolves the problem. Tathagato nisubhava. Tathagato is nisubhava. Nisubhava midan jagat. The world is nisubhava. It's something like saying uh, Buddha and the dog. There is no difference. My God, Buddha 